Hey guys, what's going on? This is Ipsec, and we're changing up a bit. Gonna exploit a single binary, not a box. That binary is called Bitterman from Camp CTF. I decided to do this because I wanted to create a ASLO bypass without brute forcing, and unfortunately, it's not possible in October. Believe me, I tried for a while until 4GP, the guy that created Calamity, spoke up and was like, eh, nothing's being printed to the screen, so it's not possible. So I decided to go around the web, find different CTF problems, and I came across this one, which is really cool. We'll get to see that ASLR bypass without brute forcing, and we'll also dig into a 64-bit binary exploit. So I hope you guys enjoy this video, and we'll jump in. So pre-warning before we do anything, this stuff is difficult. It's more difficult to talk while I'm doing it, so I'm going to say a lot of wrong things. I'll try to put some links in the description to help answer any questions you may have. So, first things first is download Bitterman. A link will be in the description to do that. And then you can run file against it and verify it is a 64-bit executable. We can also you name a box and see yes, we're in a 64-bit box. So we should be able to execute this binary. We're going to do GDB on Bitterman and we have the PETA extension loaded so I can do check sec and see that the only thing enabled is DEP which is NX. This is going to make the stack read only so we can't just drop shell code and execute. That means we have to do a return to libc type of attack. The canary, this puts something in the register before user input and then checks it after user input and if it changes the stack has been smashed. Fortify replaces a bunch of vulnerable calls with their safe equivalent to help prevent buffer overflows. Pi, this is position independent executable, and that is ASLR essentially. It's disabled in this binary, which means all the memory locations in this binary will stay the same. It doesn't mean the memory locations in the libraries that this binary uses will stay the same. We'll see that libc changes every time this binary loads, but we'll do something to a syscall in this binary to leak the address in libc to allow us to do a return to libc without brute forcing. Relro, not 100% sure what this is. I think it's read location read only, which makes the global offset table read only. So. We can run the application now, and it asks a name, so we'll just say ipsec, and put the length of message, uh, we'll do 512, and put text, hello. And it just says thanks and exits. It's a very polite binary. Useless, but at least it's polite. So now we'll try to do something more nefarious. So what is our name? Let us do python c import, nope, not import, a print a times 500. We'll say our name is 500 A's. And it just exits politely and doesn't do anything. So we'll do ipsec and length of message. We'll do 512 again and throw the A's in this spot. And now we get a seg fault. And the interesting thing is, in 64-bit binaries, you don't get a straight RIP overwrite. All the registers, if these were E's, this would be 32-bit. The E gets swapped with R in 64-bit. But don't get to overwrite this right away. We do see it is stuck on a return call. So you look at the stack pointer, which is RSP. And this memory address looks like a valid 64-bit, but it's pointed to all A's. So if it tries to return here, it's going to have a bad time. So we have to fix this return address to put actual code here, which then will get put into RIP. But in order to do that, we have to know where the overflow occurs. So let's do a pattern create 500. And if you want to know more about PETA, just watch the October video. That's where I go into um, installing it. And we're going to run this again. IPSEC 512 input text. So now we do see RSP has a bunch of random data in it. So we'll do x slash xg RSP to print it. Get this offset. 
and then do pattern offset and we see it's at 151. So we're going to throw 152 bytes into this and then we should get to the RSP overwrite. So we can now begin with a skeleton exploit. So v exploit.py and we're going to use pwn tool. So from pwn import star context terminal equals tmux new window and this is awesome. It just will load GDB into a tmux window automatically. And I can thank Blink from Hack the Box for showing me that one. Uh, this will be use later process. And we will do GDB first, so gdb.debug bitterman and we will break on main. So now when we run the script, it's going to run bitterman in GDB in a new tmux window. Then we have to set the context for our environment, which is Linux, and the architecture is AMD64. This helps parent tools know how to do some memory addressing and formatting. The next thing I'm going to do is do another comment and set context log level is equal to debug. This just comes in handy if we ever get hung in certain spots. So that's it for setting up the environment. We will have to find two different things or three different things. We need to find the um, put call which is in the binary. Puts is going to um, write our string to a place so then it can be outputted to the screen. And that's where the buffer overflow happens and also where um, we can make it leak an address. So let's do object dump dash d puts oh no, bitterman and grep for puts. So we actually want two addresses. We want this, the procedural link address, the PLT, because this is where the call exists in the binary. And we also want the address of where it is in the global offset table. So what we're going to do is have put call itself in the global offset table. And what that will do is link the address of where put is located in the binary, which changes every single time. So we want to copy this whole thing into our exploit. And hopefully this will make sense once you see it happen. So plt put, this is the procedural link table, I think. Yeah, procedural linkage table is what plt stands for, I hope. Uh, 400, 520, and we want the GOT put, the global offset table, and that's 0x600c50, and that one is right here. So, just one of those two lines. The other thing we need is a pop RDI, because in 64-bit applications, you don't put arguments on the stack. You put them in registers. And the order is, I believe, RDI, RSI, RDX, RCX for four different arguments. We only need to do one. So we're going to use Raider, not on exploit, on Bitterman. And we're going to do slash R for ROP and then pop RDI. And then take the address. So this is going to pop what's on the stack into RDI, and then return. So pop RDI is equal to that. And we don't need these leading zeros. So our payload is going to be, oh, before we do that, we need junk equals A times 152, I believe. So our payload is equal to the junk, then pop RDI, then we want to put the argument, which is the global offset table put, and then what's calling that 
FPLT put. Okay, so that's the initial payload. And we also want to grab all the output of the program. So we'll just call this. I'm not going to worry about uh, anything. Okay. That was weird. Set paste. Okay. So I want to do that. So now I can do um, p dot. What is it? Receive until name. And then we will p dot send line ipsec, and we want the next one to be p dot receive until message, and then p dot send line one o two four. Then it wants p dot receive until text. And p dot send line payload. And then we will do a raw input to pause the program until we hit enter. And if we don't do this and we're debugging it, it won't print any of the seg fault information. And we can also do p enter active to see what happens after that. So it's Python exploit opened up and we have an error. So ch -ch -ch -ch. I forgot to put everything in 64 bit format. P64, P64, P64. All that's doing is converting these addresses to a 64 bit friendly format because this is what three bytes and it needs to be eight so see if that fixes it it does we broke on main because that's what we tell it to do so we'll continue and we get a seg fault going back and it outputs some information so this is actually the memory address, and we can verify it changes by just swapping these quickly so we don't have to keep going through GDB. And P equals. So I run it again, and we see different addresses. So this is the leaked address of the put statement inside of libc. So we want to grab that. So after we send the payload, we will want to put leaked puts equals p receive. And I think that was eight. We want to get rid of any new line characters. And I'll adjust eight. It's not that. And this should make ourselves much happier. So I'll try this. Leaked puts at glibc. We don't need this right now because we're not GDBing it. OK. 
add a syntax error, just clean that up. And now we have a wonderful error that it's not doing correctly. Crap. Oh, uh, let's see. Uh, let's turn debugging on and see what's going on. Oh, not that. Debug output. There we go. Python. Name. Don't see anything there. Let's just go interactive. Oh, it sends the leak after thanks. So if we send payload p dot receive until thanks, then that should work. There we go. That looks much better. Now we see every time we're running it, we're leaking a different address. So that's good. That memory leak doesn't really do us any good if we crash the program. So the next thing to do is do another object dump on Bitterman, and we want to grep out call main. So take the memory address of main, go into our exploit script, and we will put plt main is equal to p64 the address and we also have to go to the payload to put plt main and that should do it so again if we cause the leak the program crashes the leak does us no good because the next time the program starts up then it's going to randomize all locations again. So and after we cause a leak, we want to call main to put the program back in a working state so we can do another exploit based upon information we got from the previous leaked address. So this is what this is going to test. After the exploit, we just threw um, the call main afterwards. So let's run this again. It's, we got the memory leak. And then it asks us for the length of our message. So we have successfully called the program after causing the leak, which means now we have to do the hard stuff, and that is calculate where we are in libc to get all the other offsets we want to do the lib uh, return to libc attack. So first off, we have to locate where libc is. And I'm just going to copy it in my directory to make it a bit easier to work with. Okay, so we're going to do read elf on libc and grep out puts. And we want the puts at glibc, so we'll copy this address. Go into exploit, and we want to put our address. So this will be libc put. Okay, now let's just split the screen to make it easier. Read elf s, and now we want to do libc again, and we want to grep out system. So grep this memory address, and we will put libc sys. Okay. Now we also need the string slash bin sh because we can call system and we want to call system with bin sh. So I'm going to go back over here, do strings dash a dash t x libc dot so dot six and grep for slash bin slash sh. And we get this string or this hex and we'll put. Um, libc sh is equal to. So we have all the locations in libc. So now we have to calculate the offset. So if we do offset is equal to um, the leaked puts, 
this is the address we had leaked of where puts is located, and we're going to subtract it against the libc put, and that should get us the distance away we are from this address. And that's going to be the same distance from every other address. So now we can do... Um, I'm trying to think what to call this. We'll just do system is equal to the offset plus libc sys. And sh is equal to offset plus libc sh. And let's put them in p64. And completely unneeded, but won't hurt anything. I'm going to copy the pop RDI down here as well, so we know we have to use it. Okay. Now our payload is going to be um, the junk plus pop RDI plus, I want to say, the SH plus system. Now if we do We just want to execute it again so we see what the first thing it asks us is, so we know where to begin or uh, receive and send lines. And something screwed up. Uh, what line is that? 46. What is happening here? Uh, oh, we have to unpack this. Um, leaked puts is equal to U64 leaked puts. Awesome. Okay, so we want to begin at the message. So. P dot receive until message and let's see one two three four okay let's see if this works one would hope and it just hung. So maybe it wasn't expecting message there. So again, leaked. So let's enable debug and see what it's sending us. That was GDB. It's asking what's her name, I think. So we can try starting there. And I just saw name there. So let's try this now. Uh, nope, I don't know what it's expecting. Um, oh, if it had saw name. Now we just want to send it the name. So we already received that line. And looking up here, I think I forgot a zero. It must have been a copy and paste error because that was an odd number of bits. So save this and we'll try. Python exploit, do ls, and we have a shell. So that was it. If you could follow that, you're amazing. 
If not, well, we're about to get a little bit more confusing. So let's exit out of here, clear everything, and we're going to use Pwn Tools to the max. We can exit this one too. So let's go back into our exploit, and we're pretty much going to get rid of every address we did and let... Actually, I'll just delete them. I don't need them. This stuff I don't need, really. We're just going to let Pwn Tools magically find everything. So, we're going to start off by saying log.status mapping binaries and we can say bitterman is equal to elf bitterman and we can do this because we have all the binaries including libc so rop equals rop bitterman and libc equals elf libc.so.6 okay and we're going to change the name to be exploit2.py v just in case I want the old one I figured I would <laughs> change the names so we've created bitterman, rop, and libc so we're gonna start by building a chain with rop.search reg RDI order equals. So this is magically going to find the ROP chain of pop RDI. Then the next thing is we want to find the ROP.puts, elf.got puts. This is going to create our next system call, and we also want ROP call elf.symbols main okay so this means Pwn Tools is going to magically find all those addresses we did by hand and we can say log.info stage one rop chain and plus rop.dump and we can pause the program there so we can see it. And we have to do essentially the same thing down here. So we want to keep that offset, but we don't know what libc.put is. Did I just delete him? I don't need him anyways. So this will be... Um, Puts minus libc dot symbols puts and we want to change this to be libc dot address okay we call that yeah because we called this libc up here so we're changing the address of the libc we defined earlier to be at that offset. So we're rebasing the libc. And then we can do rop2 is equal to rop libc. It's probably case sensitive. And then rop2.system next libc search slash bin sh. We want the all byte. And we don't even have to get the system. Pwn Tools is going to be smart enough that says, hey, you're trying to search for this system, uh, this bin sh, I'm going to add system for you. So a little bit of magic there. And we'll do log.info stage 2 rop chain plus rop2.dump. Okay, so this payload is going to be junk plus string rop2 and this payload is going to be junk plus string rop 
So we'll see if I magically did this correctly the very first time. And if I did, it shows just how awesome Pwn Tools is for making this easy. So Python exploit 2.py. Come on, no. Uh, logger has no object status. Okay, I forget what that one was. We'll just say log info. Uh, module has no attribute got. What line is that? 18? Rop.puts. Elf. Oh. Bitterman.gots. Bitterman.main. I normally call that elf as in the binary. So here's a rop chain. Does this look familiar? We got the um, pop RDI the address of the global offset table of puts, the address of puts. It's fixing our stack for us and then calling main. And then again, fixing our stack for us, something we didn't do. And then the next chain, we have the pop RDI, the location of bin sh system, and then fixing the stack. And again, it worked pretty much first time. So. That is that. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial or video on this exploit. Hopefully it was relatively easy to follow. I know it's not a straightforward thing, and hopefully with a lot of binary exploits I get better at explaining this stuff. And feel free to leave comments of questions and things like that, and I'll do my best to answer them. So, take care guys. See you around.